Oxygen dissolved in the feed water is an ever-present threat to steam boiler tubes like this one. Dissolved oxygen can cause pitting of this sort. And in extreme cases can penetrate the tube wall. To reduce this corrosion, we must remove dissolved oxygen from the feed water. The deaerating feed tank removes oxygen from the feed water. This film demonstrates how the deaerating feed tank does its job. The feed tank accomplishes its job in three steps. Heating the water, spraying and scrubbing the water, and pushing out and venting the scrubbed oxygen. Let's use a beaker of water to show these steps. This water contains dissolved oxygen. Here we see the beaker being heated. As the water is heated, bubbles of oxygen begin to escape. These bubbles are not steam because the water is not boiling. The hotter the water, the less oxygen it can hold. Thus, as the beaker of water becomes warmer and warmer, the oxygen no longer can remain dissolved, and bubbles separate. Boiling water can dissolve no oxygen. So, let's bring the water to a boil. And the bubbles are now a mixture of oxygen and steam. The steam is scrubbing the oxygen out of the water. But boiling it out takes more than half an hour. And you can't wait half an hour when the bridge rings up operational speed. So, let's see how this process can be speeded up. First, we must heat the water. The deeper the water, the longer it takes to heat. Time can be saved by using a thin layer of water. But this is not practicable aboard ship because the water would swash. But we can spray the water. In the beaker, the escaping bubbles had to go all the way to the surface. In the tiny droplets, the oxygen has only a small fraction of an inch to travel. Now, we inject the steam. The tiny droplets of water surrounded by steam heat very rapidly. The steam scrubs the water and pushes out the dissolved oxygen. Let's look at a diagram of a deaerating feed tank. To see how it does the job, let's first Trace the flow of water through the tank. The water enters through a heat exchanger, where it's heated by steam. The heated water then is sprayed into a steam atmosphere. The sprayed water falls onto conical trays, which carry it down to the steam nozzle. There, live steam from beneath the water sprays the water a second time. The water hits the baffles and falls completely deaerated into the storage section of the tank. Now let's watch the flow of steam through the tank. Steam enters at this inlet and blasts out of the nozzle beneath the water. The steam then travels across the top of the feed tank through the spray and back to the heat exchanger. There, part of the steam condenses and falls back into the tray to be recirculated with the water. The uncondensed steam pushes the dissolved oxygen out through this vent line. Now, with both steam and water flowing, let's see how the system accomplishes the three steps of removing oxygen. Heating the water, spraying and scrubbing the water, pushing out and venting the scrubbed oxygen. Let's first show the heating phase. The feed water entering here is heated by the steam. It's once again mingled with the steam, which further heats it. As the water falls into the tray, it is once again subjected to a blast of steam, which further heats it. The spraying and scrubbing phase is done here, and in the bottom of the heating section. The scrubbed oxygen is pushed out by the steam and vented through the outlet here. These steps occur inside the deaerating feed tank. You can't see them. But you can make sure that the deaerator is operating properly. 
You can do this by checking the shell water temperature. To be sure it's hot, preferably well above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Shell pressure. To be sure it's above atmospheric, normally in the range of 3 to 15 psi. Inlet steam pressure. To be sure it's above shell pressure so that the steam can get in. And that there is a wide open vent so that the unwanted oxygen can escape. We have seen how the deaerating feed tank operates. But unless the proper conditions are maintained at each of the four checkpoints, the deaerator cannot do its job of removing the dissolved oxygen. Remember, operator failure can lead to this or this. Thank you.